I have been most successful with the juvenile neurosis. It's nothing serious, Professor, I, I'm sure. Paul, what is it now? Words in my dream. Curtis said, it's just what I've been waiting for. When he said that, I could hear the train coming and then the crash. Gosh, Doc, it's spooky. It, it's got me. You've got to pull yourself together, Paul. Now, let's look at this thing realistically. I understand Bill Allen's going to announce the engagement. He's known your mother all her life. Do you think he'd sanction the match if he weren't sure of Curtis? I can't figure it out. Maybe I'm going wacky, Doc, but I could swear he's Barrington. Barrington's dead, Paul. I don't believe he is. But it's too fantastic. How is the young man feeling, Doctor? Oh, he's all right. He was just having a dizzy spell. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Nerves are my specialty. May I come in? Well, it's just a reaction from overwork at school. Ah, yes, I was an intense student myself at his age. Do you mind if we have a little talk, young man? I feel all right. Perhaps the doctor had better go downstairs. Seems a pity to spoil Madame's party. I'd rather have Dr. Vincent stay. Of course, I have no objection. Let's sit down and be comfortable. I understand you're an unusual boy, Paul. Extremely talented. You intend to pursue your father's research into criminology? Yes. An interesting subject. But something must be done about these nervous attacks. They're not exactly normal at your age. I presume you are devoted to your mother? Of course. As one student of human nature to another, may I speak frankly? Go ahead. In some cases, filial devotion to a mother goes beyond the borderline of normality. It can frequently produce hallucinations. Did you say hallucinations? Oh, do not be offended. I'm merely stating a theory. Let go. Please don't agitate yourself. I'm only trying to help you. I don't need a psychiatrist. But you do. I believe it is your emotional aversion to your mother's remarriage which produces these neurotic symptoms. I'm sure I can cure you in a very short time. I would like you to place yourself under my care at Restview. Restview? That's a sanitarium for mental cases. Yes, but I wouldn't consider you a patient, merely a guest. Guest? Well, that's right of you. Good night, Professor. I'm sorry. I, I assure you I meant no offense. May I see you a moment, Doctor? I'll be right back, Paul. The boy's agitation reveals an emotional influence which should be corrected immediately. I hope you can persuade him. I'll speak to him. Good. Well, the same words as your dream, weren't they? It's extraordinary. Oh. Those two are mixed up together somehow, Doc. Hallucinations. Do you believe that stuff? Well, I've read about it in textbooks. And according to him, I've got him. He seems to think so. What else did he say, Doc? Well, he wanted me to ask you to go to his sanitarium and let him analyze you. You know, Doc, that might not be a bad idea. But I don't think it's necessary. But, Doc, I might find out something up there. Yes. Paul, if... If those two men are what you think they are, it'd be mighty dangerous. Well, you could come up every day and keep an eye on me, couldn't you? Yes. Besides, it might be a good way to stall for time. I'd make Mother promise not to marry Curtis till I got back. But Paul... And meanwhile, you could take these to Armstrong and get him to analyze them, their fingerprints off a water glass. Curtis? I'll talk to Mulbach. Paul, oh, you're a very clever boy. Thanks, Doc. I'd be in a tough spot without you. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're both crazy. Then again, maybe we're not. It's a lovely room, isn't it, Paul? Very nice. I hope you'll find it comfortable. My routine is a simple one. A few heart-to-heart -heart talks, plenty of food and rest. Believe me, Mrs. Cartwright, he will return home a healthier and happier boy. I'm sure he will. Goodbye, darling. Don't read too much. 
You'll take good care of him, won't you, Professor? Of course, madame. I'll drop in tomorrow and see how he's getting along. Please do, Doctor. I'm always happy to have the cooperation of my colleagues. Thank you. Goodbye, Paul. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Doc. Goodbye, Princess. Goodbye, darling. I'll see you later. tennis shoes. Do you happen to know where I could get a pair? I'm sure Professor Muehlbach can lend you some. Thanks. Can I help you get settled? Oh, no, thanks, Professor. There's not much to do. That's a funny place to hang your coat. Oh, I got tired of looking at myself. Same old face. Got your inferiority, eh? We'll overcome that. I encourage tidiness as much as possible. Orderly room, orderly mind. I hope you have a good appetite for lunch. Pretty fair. Anything special you prefer? Well, I'm not fussy, Professor. Uh, that's a nice garden you have. Gardening is my hobby. I'm very proud of my flowers. How about the rest of the place? Do you uh, have many patients? Quite a few, but don't let your mind dwell on that. We are facing in the direction of normality. I hope you will have complete confidence in me. I'll ask you many personal questions. You must be truthful and accurate in your replies. That's important. Remember, we're friends. Just call the office if you want anything. Is it all right if I use the phone to call outside? Well, certainly. Feel free to call anyone you wish. Thank you. I'll see you at lunch. I'd like to get Wainfield 1531, please. Hello, Vixen. What's Mixon? Oh, Paul. Where are you? I'm up at Middleborough getting my brain unscrambled. It's all very scientific. Cures hives and hangnails and improves the disposition, it says here. Are you missing my kissing? Was that some kind of code? No, just juvenile vernacular. What pleases the significance? Young romance in the modern manner. 
romance. I see. I can't sleep. Nightmares. I'll get you a sedative. Go to your room. We don't permit the patients to wander through the corridors at night. Well, I'm not a patient. I'm a guest. I must admit, the boy puzzles me. I can learn nothing from him except that he suspects you. I'm sure he knows you're Barrington. How he arrived at that conjecture, I don't know. From his father's files, I found the Barrington folder in his desk. The boy is as persistent as his father was. I won't be in the clear until I get squared with the entire family. It'll be quite ironic, won't it? The elusive Barrington, married to the widow of the Honorable Judge Albert Cartwright. He won't be a fault in Elvis. Right now, his main idea is to delay the marriage. Well, he's managed that already. He promised him not to marry me until he returns. There must be some way to overcome that. Find some pretext to leave town, then persuade her to join you. You should have sufficient influence to overcome her promise to the boy. I will detain him here as long as possible. As soon as I have word from you that the ceremony has been performed, this troublesome opposition can be eliminated. How do you propose to do it? I will attend to it. Come in. Mr. Curtis, ma'am. Oh, Brad. I didn't expect you so early. No, I had to see you, dear. I have to go to Washington on business. Oh, darling, what a shame. I want you to come with me. We can stop off at Richmond and be married. I couldn't do that, Brett. I, I promised Paul. Are you going to let Paul spoil things between us, Virginia? Oh, darling, don't even think such a thing. Then come with me. We'll turn the trip into a honeymoon. Couldn't we wait till Paul gets back? I feel so much better about it. Virginia, from the first moment we met, everything went perfectly between us. Then Paul came home and you began to change. Nonsense. We announced our engagement. Everything will go as we planned. Let's go down and get the license and have it over with today. Right now. I couldn't. Very well, then. 
Just as you wish. I'll be leaving this afternoon. I'll be gone for several weeks. But do you really have to go? Perhaps it'll be just as well if you have time to think this out alone. I want you to be sure of your feelings, Virginia. But I am sure. You know that. Then why not marry me and stop worrying about Paul? I can't help being concerned about him, Brett. He's my own boy. But he's getting the best of care. You back will have him well again in no time. Let's call him up and find out how he's getting along. Of course, he's doing splendidly, madame. You have no cause to worry. No need to delay your marriage. Allow me to offer my felicitations. Hey, goodbye. How long will it take you to check some fingerprints? Who's are they? Curtis. Paul got them. He asked me to turn them over to you. He's a chip off the old block, all right. The judge hung on like a bulldog whenever he got his teeth into anything. Mm, that's right. I'll have these checked just to prove there's nothing to it. Let me see. Where does Curtis hail from? Oh, he's lived in Oregon, Nevada, Colorado, California. California's good. They get thumbprints on driver's licenses. Curtis says he doesn't drive. Well, we won't take his word for that. Check those with Washington, Tom, and try the California License Bureau. Okay, Chief. So long, Doc. I'll let you know, Doctor, if anything develops. Goodbye, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Should it be? Sometimes we lock doors as a precaution against somnambulism. Ms. Farber notes here that you complained of having a nightmare. Can you tell me about it? Only that something dangerous was going to happen. Do you have such dreams often? Yes. Can you remember anything definite about them? The train, my father's death. I dream of that often. I understand, of course. Shocking accident. It preys on your mind. It wasn't an accident, Professor. It was murder. That was never proven. You have some theories on the subject? Yes, indeed. I should be interested in hearing them. Well, I'd rather not talk about them now, Professor. It gives me a headache. Very well, Paul. Now, what would you like to do by way of diversion? Well, I see you have some binoculars. They must be good ones. They are excellent. Would you like to examine them? Could I? Of course. Go right ahead. Well, I'd like to take a good look. Come along. You can see Wayne Field through them from the roof. There's the county seat down there. From here, you can see Wayne Field. Over here, Paul, you can see the ferry crossing the river. Farm. Uh, over this way, Paul, see the ferry? You can almost distinguish the people's faces on the deck. Nice binoculars. Yes, they are. Well, there's Dr. Vincent. We better go down. Yes. Would you mind going to your room? I'd like to have a talk with the doctor, and then I shall send him to you. you came, Doctor. I'm having a little difficulty. I feel there's something on Paul's mind which he does not confide to me. If there's something you know, you may speak freely. All I know is he has nightmares about his father. Now that he has told me, but he will not say any more. His reticence hinders my diagnosis. 
If you could persuade him to discuss these matters more fully, it would be of great assistance. I'll see what I can do. Where is Paul? In his room. Show Dr. Vincent to Cartwright's room, please. Thank you. Come in. Hello, Doc. How are you, Paul? Sure glad to see you. How's Mother? Oh, a little worried about you. Otherwise, all right. I saw her this morning. Well, Professor Muehlbach's a good host. I'm enjoying it here. That's fine. Oh, look, Doc, I found something in Plato I'd like to show you. Oh, yes, yeah. Great chap, Plato. Modern today as he was in his own time. Paul, how'd you like to take a little ride with me? Well, that depends on Professor Muehlbach. We'll have to ask him. Well, let's do that. Well, how do you find your patient, Doctor? He looks rested, but I'd like to take him for a drive in the fresh air so he won't feel shut in here. That is, if you have no objections. Not at all. Provided you don't keep him out too long. Oh, a half hour or so. We'll take a drive through the hills. This is beautiful country. I trust you will urge Paul to relax and talk more freely. I'm very anxious for him to get straightened out so he can go back to school. Be